We're back at GTC 2024 in San Jose. This is theCUBE and Scott Bills is here. He's the Vice President at Dell Professional Services. Scott, thanks for making some time. Yeah, thank you for having me. So, you're welcome. I mean, services, we always say rubber meets the road with services. That's where actually the business value is realized. It reduces risks for customers. But wow, we're talking about a whole new era mm -hmm. here, right? And of course, services, you go with the flow, right? If the customer says, hey, this is what we want, you guys figure out how to how to deliver it. You're obviously doing a lot of infrastructure. You've got a big ecosystem, but as I say, we're entering a new era now. So how are you guys, you know, first of all, what do you think of the show? And then let's get into how you guys are accommodating this AI world. Yeah, love the show, love the energy, love the announcement we had with the Dell AI factory, which our services is going to obviously help support mm. uh, from a, a Dell standpoint. Um, really what we're looking to do from a, a services point of view and, and how we're thinking about the space is that we want to help customers uh, from you know, day zero to day, day two plus on their uh, AI transformation journey. So that starts with helping them understand what are the use cases, what's the strategy, how do you assess readiness, how do you prepare the organization for AI, then how do you think about data readiness, prepare the data, um, engineer the data, ingest the data, scale that. How do you stand up the infrastructure, the software, the hardware, deploy the models, optimize, and then scale over time. So our goal with Dell um, and Dell Professional Services is to really help our customer through that end-to-end -end journey, but also meet the customers where they're at. So if we do have a customer, for example, who has you know, addressed the use cases, figured out the strategy, we can help them with the data or we can help them with performance optimization. It's meeting them uh, where they're at and working with them with the AI factory to provide a real easy button for, uh, for AI, so for let's enterprises. Un let's unpack that AI factory a little bit. So we, have, we saw Michael Dell at the keynote right up front he had he had a little bit of an entourage with him, mm -hmm. which was awesome. And then Jensen like, gave an unbelievable shout out. He said, "Absolutely, something to the effect of there's no better company in the world to building end-to-end -end AI systems than Dell." It was like floor drop moment. It is Michael <laughs> Dell. He's ready to take your orders. And big wave, and good tongue-in-cheek joke, but he's ready to take the orders. So, so that was quite amazing. Uh, but what is the AI factory? What's that partnership like? How, how can we expect it to unfold? Yeah, it's really an end-to-end -end solution uh, for enterprises to really provide them that easy button for AI. So it brings the breadth of, of Dell uh, infrastructure and hardware, so compute, storage, uh, networking, uh, workstations, ed devices, uh, laptops plus NVIDIA uh, AI infrastructure and their software stacks, uh, including the, um, the new MIM, uh, microservices uh, software that they'll be bringing to market, right. plus our combination of uh, Dell and uh, NVIDIA professional services uh, as well to provide a real turnkey solution uh, for, uh, a, uh, for enterprises to help them uh, address their biggest challenges, uh, their most complex issues around adopting AI uh, use cases and, and driving those into to operations and production. Let's talk about what's happening in, in the field, what customers are asking for. I mean, big picture. You know, tech spending is what it is. I mean, there's a macro headwind. Mm -hmm. Everybody talks about it on their earnings calls. Uh, our, the, our data with our partner ETR shows that about 44% of customers tell us that they're, they're funding AI, Gen AI specifically, by taking from other budgets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not just like, here's a checkbook, go. Um, the CFOs are being very careful. Two thirds of the customers expect their Gen AI ROI inside of 12 months. Mm -hmm. Not to put pressure on you. <laughs> um, so we know there's a lot of experimentation going on. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing in the field? How are you thinking about that? Getting, helping them get that ROI. What are you seeing? It's really that upfront process of identifying the use cases, prioritizing, mm -hmm. I and mean, really understanding where the business value is uh, from AI. So it's understanding how do you apply it, how do you integrate it into your business processes, applications, and how do you make it real? So it's really that first step of understanding how AI drives value. As you're thinking about POCs, as you're thinking about use cases and driving that into production, it's having that upfront lens that assesses that upfront and prioritizes prioritizes uh, based on that. So it's got to be an interesting, I mean, you've, I'm sure, seen many waves. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we've ever seen one like this, but we've seen waves. So we know what a wave looks like and mm -hmm. feels like. And a lot of times it's like, hey, we got to do something in AI, or we got to do something in X. And that's sort of what's happening now. The boss says, hey, what's your AI strategy? I don't really have a good one. So. Um, what is that starting conversation like? You start with the data, you start. You say you start with the use case, but it's like, what are they asking you? What are the customers asking you? How do I drive more productivity? I'm sure they're asking, how is, how is Dell using AI internally? Absolutely. How are, we, how are our 
How are others in our industry using it? So what do you, what, are you seeing any patterns that are emerging? A lot of the large enterprises are very, very similar to the experience that we're seeing with Dell, which is they have hundreds of use cases they've identified across the organization, and the challenge is really where to get started. Where's the biggest opportunity, the bang for the buck? How do you think about clusters of common use cases? How do you think about the patterns? How do you think about architecture uh, from a solution standpoint um, and a data strategy to support that as well, um, aligned with those, those clusters? and use cases, but it's really around um, figuring out where the best opportunity is just because in most organizations they're finding hundreds of potential applications for uh, AI. Yeah, so you know in gymnastics they have the ratings, right? And there's, mm -hmm. and there's, there's the execution mm -hmm. and then there's the degree of difficulty. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know, figure skating, kind of the same thing, right? Um, so I would imagine there's a similar analogy here. Is mm -hmm. if, if you've got really good data uh, and it's clean data, and it's high fidelity, and it's like sort of low risk data, well that's going to be easier, mm -hmm. but it may not deliver the business value. So mm -hmm. where are people starting? Are they starting to get some you know, quick wins and singles just to get some muscle memory going, or are they going after those big productivity hits? Quick singles I would characterize it as, and they're also focusing more on internal use cases. Uh, so functional optimization, things like content generation, software development, sales uh, support. Um, services, things like that, where uh, it's a lower risk environment internally before they start to you know, pursue AI use cases that may be more externally customer uh, focused or customer facing, where there may be some more um, execution risk or the impact of execution risk might be higher. So software development would be coding. Assist, yeah, correct, right? correct. So that's got to be a big use mm -hmm. case. Yeah, absolutely. What, what, are the, what are the early returns saying in terms of the productivity improvements that people are seeing with developers? Yeah, it's, it's significant, <laughs> you know, so it, it definitely Definitely is worth the investment that we're seeing in terms of the AI tools, the solutions to go drive that, the use cases. So the uh, the early impacts for software development, um, you know, from what we've seen is, is, is strong, it's positive. And then, what's the state of data, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, on the one hand, I feel like, you know, the big data era and Hadoop and all that stuff has sort of really got us thinking about how to get our data estates in order, but at the same time, so much more data was created with cloud and mobile and social and we just became inundated. It was almost really quite difficult to keep up and then sort of Hadoop uh, didn't get us where we needed to go. So mm -hmm. we sort of pivoted, um, started to develop pretty sophisticated data pipelines, which mm -hmm. probably helped. A lot of that's focused on analytics. I still got the trans transactions over here, my analytics over there. I've got different data types, structured and unstructured. So it's a real challenge, but what are you seeing in your customer base in terms of the state of data? I'm sure it's a wide spectrum, but but are we in good shape, or are we got to we, we got do we have to fix our data estate before we can get that AI ROI? Fix, fix that data estate is generally what we're seeing, mm -hmm. and I think the, the the key goes back to what we were saying before, which is to understand what your data strategy should be and how you should be managing data and leveraging data. You need to understand what the use cases are going to be, and I think most organizations, rather than figuring out what data should look like on a use case by use case basis, are going to have to develop a more comprehensive strategy for thinking about data across uh, use cases and AI adoption more generally within the organization. Scott, how about the, we've put forth, you know, gosh, a year ago now, the power law of Gen AI, where you got some big, big models, big size of models, but then you've got a, a long tail, smaller models, very specific domain, mm -hmm. domain specificity within, you know, let's say, I think great use case would be financial services or healthcare, mm -hmm. or virtually any industry actually. So what are you seeing in terms of that sort of sovereign AI, private AI, sort of on-prem AI, if you will. A lot more experimentation with the domain-specific uh, AI um, or LLMs, foundational models, mm -hmm. versus um, organizations looking to build and train their own models. You know, I think when we were looking back six months ago, there was a sense that people would be building and training their own models internally, um, and what we're finding is that um, there's more gravitation to the smaller, more domain-specific, kind of smaller parameter um, models than you know, developing uh, models from scratch on their own and training are people Are people leaning Leaning into retrieval augmented generation? Are they looking to, to you to Absolutely. help them develop that? And, and how are they going about it? Are they trying to do it out of the box? Are they kind of cobbling it together on their own? Well, that's one of the exciting things we announced this week as well, in addition to the AI factory, is the REG uh, solution uh, that we have de uh, developed jointly uh, with NVIDIA and Dell, uh, common architecture, and then we do have a set of services around that as well to help customers rapidly deploy, operationalize, implement, and deploy uh, their first set of REG use cases using a, a common framework, common so architecture. So what would that entail? Would I take basically a corpus of data, make sure it's clean, 
put it inside of a Dell object store. Vector and, database. And, and, mm -hmm. and get the vector database piece by, of my choice. Right? You guys, mm -hmm. I mean, you may have opinions, but, but I, I presume you're saying to customer, like, I kind of know Dell. Mm -hmm. Use whatever you want, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And if you, if you want an opinion, we'll give you one. But, Absolutely but okay, right. So it's, it's sort of open. I can choose my, my, my core database, my vector database, and, and go. Mm -hmm. And then essentially, you, you start getting an LLM or, or a rag out of the box, mm -hmm. is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And so then you start working it and help human. Help them deploy the vector database, do the embeddings, um, um, figure out what the you know, specific use case should be, what the model should be, and then yeah, get them implemented and, and help them operationalize that and start to see the initial results and, and train that over time as well. What about the broader ecosystem? I mean, I, you know, Dell's a product company, but you've mm -hmm. got services that are accelerants. Um, you also have relationships. Mm -hmm. Dell has relationships with GSIs. You have relationships with software companies. What's the ecosystem look like? How is that reshaping mm -hmm. uh, for AI? Yeah, we're developing you know, the specific strategy for working with GSIs and, and their mm -hmm. customers and, and how they're specifically around vertical use cases and leveraging their industry specific expertise. We're also heavily uh, relying on kind of the ISV community to bring technical expertise, um, IP and leadership in specific uh, use cases uh, as well. So we're working with the broader partner community in a, a number of different ways, both from a go-to-market standpoint, but then also delivery standpoint as well. Okay, tell, tell services secret Scott, mm -hmm. thanks so much for spending some time on the Cube. Yeah, thank you very much, enjoyed it. All right, you're welcome. Okay, we're here covering the AI era, GTC 2024, Dave Vellante and John Furrier. We'll be right back right after this short break. You're watching the Cube.